Does hyponatremia confuse you? It doesn't have to. If you're a confused medical student or a resident doctor asked to do a hyponatremia workup and you don't know what to do, well, you're in the right place. I'm Dr. Yad, an internal medicine resident, and nothing gets medics excited like sodium. It's easier than you think if you follow this algorithm. First things first, hyponatremia is sodium less than 135 milliequivalent per liter. If you find hyponatremia, do two things. First, check the patient's serum osmolality, which is a simple measurement of the concentration of solutes in the blood. Either send for a lab analysis or manually calculate it with the formula below. Two times sodium plus glucose plus urea, all in minimal per liter. If the total is more than 295 milliosmol per kg, it's hypertonic. 275 to 295 is isotonic and less than 275 is hypotonic. Secondly, check the patient's volume status. Are they dry, hypovolemic? normal, euvolemic, or fluid overloaded, hypervolemic. Hypertonic hyponatremia means there is extra solute in the blood. So assess for hyperglycemia, which is a common culprit, or recent mannitol, sorbitol, or contrast media use. Isotonic hyponatremia, also called pseudohyponatremia, is due to high levels of lipids and proteins in the blood that cause lab errors in sodium levels. So assess for hyperlipidemia and hyperproteinemia. If the osmolality is hypotonic though, less than 275, then this is true hyponatremia. And it's where we need to do a proper clinical volume status check. You know how to do this. You look at the vital signs, look for peripheral edema and JVP, look at the skin turgor and mucous membranes for dryness, and you check their UNEs for biochemical dehydration. At this point, when you suspect true hyponatremia, send off a urine sample for urine sodium and urine osmolality. If your patient is dry, hypovolemic, it means they've lost both water and sodium. We'll look at the urine sodium levels. The reason we do this is to see whether the loss of water and sodium, because sodium follows water, is from the kidney or not. If urinary sodium is more than 20, then it's renal loss of sodium. One cause is Addison's disease. Remember, mineralocorticoids keep water in the body, so they keep sodium in and push potassium out. Thus, in Addison's, which is lack of mineralocorticoids, sodium is excreted from the kidneys and potassium is kept in, resulting in hyponatremia and hyperkalemia, which is why hyponatremia worker plans include a morning cortisol level. Another cause is high-dose diuretics, causing all the sodium to be peed out. If urinary sodium is less than 20, then the loss of water and sodium is not from the kidneys. Causes include diarrhea and vomiting, and also third spacing from major burns or pancreatitis. The treatment for hypovolemic hyponatremia is simply rehydration with isotonic, or in other words, normal saline. If your patient's volume status is normal, Uvolemic. Urinary sodium is likely to be above 20, and we need to look at urinary osmolalities. In uvolemic hyponatremia, there is increased total body water, but normal sodium levels. Hence, sodium levels appear low in reference to total body water. This is why this type of hyponatremia is also called dilutional hyponatremia. If urine osmolality is more than 100, then this can be SIADH. But first, you need to rule out hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency, and diuretic use, which are all other causes of dilutional hyponatremia. What is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIADH? It's simply when too much antidiuretic hormone is secreted, and it results in too much water being reabsorbed into the body in the kidneys. It's a diagnosis of exclusion and has the following diagnostic criteria, some of which we've already reached by our classification so far. Number one, decreased serum osmolality, in other words, hypotonic hyponatremia. Number two, urine osmolality has to be more than 100. Number three, the patient has to be euvolemic. Number four, urinary sodium needs to be more than 30. Now note that we used 20 
um, as the differentiating number between renal and non-renal uh, loss of sodium. But in the SIDH criteria, urinary sodium has to be more than 30. The thyroid and adrenal function both need to be normal and the patient can't be on diuretics. Causes of SIDH and its management is a top for another day. However tempted I may be to go off on a tangent and discuss them right now, I won't. If urine osmolality is less than 100, then this can be primary polydipsia, simply drinking too much water, or beer protomania syndrome, a rare and interesting syndrome which happens when you don't eat much but drink a lot of beer. The first line of treatment for all the different kinds of euvolemic hypotonic, or in simpler terms, dilutional hyponatremia, is fluid restriction. Finally, if your patient is fluid overloaded, then it's hypervolemic hyponatremia. Again, we look at the urinary sodium. If urinary sodium is less than 20, then the loss is not from the kidneys and the cause is fluid overload caused by either heart failure, liver failure, or nephrotic syndrome causing hypoalbuminemia. Treatment is diuretics along with fluid and sodium restriction. If the urinary sodium is more than 20, this simply means the kidneys are shutting down and sodium is leaking out of the failing kidneys. Treatment is dialysis along with fluid and sodium restriction. Please remember that this is the general workup and management of asymptomatic hyponatremia. Symptomatic hyponatremia management is very different and can be a medical emergency. And remember, if you give fluids, don't correct sodium too quickly. Do follow your hospital's local guidelines on what fluid to give and how quickly, as a rapid correction can cause some fatal complications such as osmotic demyelination syndrome or ODS. But that's a talk for another sodium video. So now you know how to properly do a hyponatremia workup and answer the real question, to give or not to give fluids. This was Dr. Yad, and if you enjoyed the content and learned something new today, do like the video and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. I would really appreciate your support, and in the process, you might learn a thing or two from a medic. If you had any questions, drop it in the comments below, and I'd happily answer any sodium-related questions. See you next time.